Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is taking place in a blank void, kind of John Oliver style, because we're rearranging some things here at the office. It's going to look much better, so stay tuned for that, but for now, thank you for your patience while there's kind of this blank void. Uh, today's video is part of my brand new therapy series. I've outlined when psychotherapy might be a good fit for you and what it really looks like. I'm going to link both of those videos in the description box below in case you've missed them. Today is going to be a little bit different. Throughout the series, I'm going to give you a brief rundown of different therapy approaches in order to help you choose the right therapist. We're going to start at the origins of psychotherapy today with psychoanalysis. You might not know the word, but you've probably heard of the crater at least in passing. Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist born in 1856. He actually practiced as a doctor in medicine in Vienna until he had to leave the country to escape Nazi persecution. He ultimately died in exile from his home country in England in 1939, after revolutionizing the field of psychology and laying the foundation for treating psychopathology through the interactions between a patient and a professional. We're not going to get into his personal history any further in today's video, but let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video on that later on. Anyway, throughout his interactions with his patients, Freud began to conceptualize and define the unconscious as unacceptable and uncomfortable thoughts, feelings, desires, and memories. And this is different from how modern science empirically defines the unconscious, but at the time this theory was an absolute game changer. Psychoanalysis is based on the belief that people's behavior is actually driven by these unconscious drives, as well as personality, goals, and relationships. Basically everything that defines a person comes down to that unconscious. Freud believed that mental health concerns such as depression or anxiety were rooted in the conflict between our conscious and this unconscious mind, because the unconscious often contained things that were considered unpleasant or socially unacceptable. So they got buried in our subconscious because they could bring us pain or social rejection. But because he believed that these thoughts, urges, and memories still influenced how we think or behave, that influence leads to negative conflicts and psychological distress. Freud also believed that personality had three components, the id, the ego, and the superego. The id contains all of the unconscious and primal impulses. The ego is what controls the impulses of the id and makes us behave realistically and according to social norms. The ego is essentially the referee between the id and the superego, basically leveling us out. And this usually happens through using defense mechanisms protecting us from the discomfort of the unconscious entering our conscious thoughts or actions. And last but not least, the superego is what contains our ideals. This is where our beliefs, values, and morals come from. Freud's psychodynamic theories emphasize the unconscious mind as well as sex, aggression, and childhood experiences. Freud even believed that your personality was set in stone by age five. He created theories such as penis envy, which proposed that very young girls feel deprived and envious that they don't have one, which later led to a desire for access to one and normal heterosexual development. He also conceptualized the Oedipus complex, which involves a child's sexual desire for a parent of the opposite sex and a sense of rivalry with the parent of the same sex. And the Oedipus complex comes from the ancient Greek tale of Oedipus, Although Oedipus didn't know that he had married his mother, so it was a little bit different, but that's, that's beside the point, to be honest. Freud also famously said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Meaning that, despite his heavy analysis on the past and into your word usage, not everything should be heavily analyzed in terms of sex or hidden meaning. Now this may sound like distant history, but psychoanalysis is actually still used today. Most psychologists or psychotherapists take a more eclectic or holistic approach to psychology, which basically means combining lots of different methods, but there are still some who solely utilize psychoanalysis. Nowadays, many do view psychoanalysis with skepticism at best or negative contempt at worst. But in the 1950s, Hyman Spotnitz, which that, yes, that is, that is his real name, he worked on expanding psychoanalytic techniques to include patients that traditional Freudian psychoanalysis often failed to help, such as BPD, narcissism, and psychosis. It focused a lot on narcissistic transference, protecting a fragile ego, and other emotionally based interventions. Today, psychoanalysis utilizes several traditional and modern techniques. Free association, which involves the client freely talking about whatever comes to mind while the analyst looks for hidden meanings and slips of the tongue, 
which is otherwise known as Freudian slips, and this was believed to reveal unconscious conflicts. Dream analysis, resistance analysis, and transference analysis are also common techniques. So while psychoanalysis does have its uses even in modern times, there are definite criticisms and drawbacks with using this approach rigidly or exclusively. Psychoanalysis is an intense approach that requires a time and money commitment, which doesn't make it a good fit for a brief, problem-focused approach, someone with immediate needs, or if you struggle financially. This method also involves many concepts that you can't observe, properly define, or test for efficacy. Many also find the detachment from the therapist to be off-putting, and it can be difficult to develop a strong therapeutic relationship. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Don't forget to give it a like if you did. Let me know the topics you'd like me to cover, either in this therapy series or something else altogether. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss any of my videos. Take care, y'all. Today, psycho and so while psycho, I'd say psychoanalysis ten times. Ugh.